we've we've just barely in the past i don't know two to three hundred years we've just barely scratched the surface as to what what biometrics are uh you know how how the the human body the the biology behind the human body works you know the the yeah. the tangible parts you know the ones that that you know get donated when you <laughs> when you pass on you know mm-hmm. right We're just barely understanding this and and uh and forgetting the 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 animus the soul that's behind all of this as well you know because it's you know we're 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 understanding the bi- the the biological aspects of ourselves, but we are neglecting the spiritual aspects of ourselves, and it's it's a good reminder to n- neglect this. You know, there's there's schemes that we impose on ourselves that stop us from seeing just how spirituality or the soul moves throughout all of us, or you know, call it the human spirit, call it whatever pretty name you want to give it, but uh, you know. Uh, it's it's a good reminder to hey you know let's let's also look at at the spirituality behind this so um, yeah uh, fantastic uh, a fantastic labor and it's a labor of love you know that that just that you're putting out there in 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 this medium so you know <laughs> yeah and I've I have a, I have a um, I've been trying to listen to more rap um, rap is like a beautiful uh, genre because it, you know, it doesn't have a lot of melody, but it has a lot of meaning in it. It can, it, you know, it, ha- it can have a lot of meaning in its lyrics and the yeah. way that they're presented in that, in that rhythmic fashion, it's like, it hits you. You know what yeah. I mean? I believe all music, I, I believe all music is holy or consecrated. I, I believe that all music is consecrated and, um, yeah, and um, off the topic of Odyssey of Fire, like since we're talking about music, um, I just wanted to say like uh, that's a huge deal in, um, but it is kind of related to Odyssey of Fire actually. But but um, the that's it. That feeling that you just described is like a, a huge thing I want to convey in my first feature film that I'm gonna be making here soon, provided everything works out with COVID and all yeah. that the voice right. of harmony and um oh man i love that <laughs> yeah oh yeah you're, ryman here is actually the uh you're gonna be one of the actors in that oh that's exciting yeah he's uh he plays uh leroy we're still we're still in pre-production right now we're still trying right. to another cast and crew and stuff and and budget and there's a lot that goes into it but basically the the film is about um, and I'll get to why it's related to Odyssey of Fire in a minute. The film's about a group of um, a ba- that are in a band, and there's five of them. Uh, the main character's name is Danny. She used to be in a gang called the Deep that named themselves after sea creatures. And the leader, Kraken, and is wanting to get her back into that gang. Um, well, she's trying to clean up her act. She's had a criminal record. She has a warrant out for her arrest, so she can't really go and, you know, report them or anything mm-hmm. because she could get in trouble too. And she's just trying to move on. You know, she's trying to stay low and, you know, she's wanting to get into her music career. But yeah, it's, um, there's a lot that she has to go through. But the reason why it's um, related to Odyssey of Fire is the interconnectivity of the characters um, and their bond, and that's a huge deal in Odyssey of Fire too. Um, the biggest thing is the song that they're gonna sing at the end is a song that appears in Odyssey of Fire. Oh, that's so cool to connect your works in that way. Yeah, and, I love this the, mind. <laughs> yes. The thing is, um, the song, the song um, is called uh, the song is called the Voice of Harmony, and um, the, the you know part of the the the, the plot is kind of similar to 
uh, Odyssey of Fire. It, well, it's not as like it's not on the same scale or anything, but the whole you know the 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 thing is uh, Phasian wants to convert Sui to his cause, like I said, and um, Kraken wants Danny to rejoin the 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 gang. And, Dan- and Danny's just wanting to move on. Suey's wanting to um, find her place. Danny's wanting to find her place. And the voice of harmony is just a a way for me to um, to go ahead and tell a similar story on a lower budget in order to get people excited for Odyssey of Fire whenever I act. Because Odyssey of Fire, whenever I do the TV show, it's going to be a lot of budget for that because of how big it is, you know? Yeah. It's a beautiful... It's a beautiful way of bringing all these... Because as they are your... uh, You know, they're they're your... uh, uh, your brainchild, maybe? Is that the yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Being being that they are your brainchild, th- these all these uh, different projects are your brainchild, to have a link bringing them all together as, you know, as as n- the nucleus to the cell, the cell to the, to the body part, the body part to the to the body, and then... Right. So it's, it's always good to have that connection, and it starts with it starts with the nucleus, right? Well, especially, you yeah. know, making an overarching kind of link between everything that fan core entertainment is is involved in. And I think that's important for a brand. And I think that's important, you know, for an audience and a fan base to be able to, you know, connect each of their, uh, each of the works and each of the, the things that are being, you know, put out for, for entertainment, for learning, for whatever, you know, it is that you might be trying to say with what it is that you've put out, you know, it's, it's important for a fan base to feel like, you know, it's part of some bigger anthology and bigger mythology that, you know, they can follow. Yeah, I think um, a big thing is I do want to reference a lot of the things that I do. Um, One thing I, I, I did in one of my short films called competitive market, which you can see clips of in the, in the channel trailer on the YouTube channel, um, is, uh, one of the things I did there is there's a scene where, uh, the, the main character is texting his friend and there, and he, after he's done texting her, he texts the, uh, like a movie, like, like kind of like a chat bot of some sort that like, gives him movie times Mm -hmm. and I list a lot of things that I plan on working on in the future and uh one of them was like uh one of them was Odyssey of Fire as a film oh that's great yeah and uh, there was a few others that I did like uh one of them is was called uh, Poodles and Wine, but I, I'm thinking I'm, I'm probably gonna change the name to An Empty Cloud. Wait, wait, we need it. Poodles and Wine. What's 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 that about? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's you've been why. Listening to Frank Zappa lately. You've been listening to some Zappa. That, that's why I changed the name. The mental image simple. of that was really fantastic. <laughs> yes. I want a concept art of that, please. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, the the poodles and wine. I'm probably gonna call it an empty glass, but it's gonna be another feature film that I plan on making. Um, it'll be set in downtown Puyallup in Washington, mm. Washington State. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's about an old man that uh, named Randy, who he owns a wine store, and his wife. Uh, his wife left him and he has like the only thing he has to remember her by is is the dog Aww. and he loved her and the dog is a poodle and um, 
the there's this other there's this woman that comes into the the store every now and then and he and he has like a fascination for her you know mm-hmm. like he he still loves his wife but like at the same time there's something about this woman you know something different and unique mm-hmm. that he loves. and um the, but the woman doesn't really have any interest in him. She's only interested in his dog. <laughs> she wants to buy his dog because she's a poodle breeder. And he's an older dog, but, like, she sees, like, he has good genes and stuff. Um, and, yeah, with, I don't want to spoil too much, but it's kind of like a romance and a drama. Yeah, it sounds like you have some really exciting stuff planned for the future and for Fancore Entertainment and that's you know that's really exciting and you know I I see many podcasts in the future about the upcoming works and plans and you know it yeah it's once we yeah uh, I'm hoping you know this the channel will kick off okay so I've been working on this I've been working on this uh, song. It's called "All I Could Do Was Laugh in the Face of Death." Yeah, and uh, and it comes from a very personal experience, um, which uh, has has birthed a whole nother thought pattern. You know, and, right? Uh, what you were there's a part on it. There's a part of it that says. Uh, uh, re- the reflection of the self upon a wall made out of time uh, will demonstrate the vain endeavors and how much they aren't even worth a dime. And we, like, the influx or the, the influx of information, the influx of, or, or things perceived just with the eye, um, you know, we'll perceive something and then we will project our, our own views or our own, uh, you know, skewed views onto the reality that is being perceived as you know nothing is inherently in itself good or evil it's the intent right Mm -hmm. but then when we receive this Mm -hmm. uh this stimulus this outer stimulus then we project our own positivity or negativity onto the uh, onto that you know and and Mm -hmm. through time you know uh through time we are we are that prism like uh, i'm an element of surpassed despotism as light and inner clarity shines as through a prism the reflection of the self upon a wall made out of time um we become that prism we are the ones that that diffract this light into different hues or or different colors or views hues and views um that right <laughs> I gotta write that down. Uh, <laughs> There's a song but, coming on. Yes, I can yes, feel yes, it, it forming. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it, it's that thing where we, you know, like we we put that onto, you know, like through time, the, the wall is time, and then our time here is what we we become that projection we become that prism and then it becomes projected on on time now um given time you know even even the blind can change their views you know what i mean Mm -hmm. (laughs) even even people that don't have a view can can or that don't have a physical looking they, they they don't have a glass to look through even they can change their actual views you know yeah um so uh it's it's uh man i lost that train of thought <laughs> but but there it is you know yeah, I <laughs> yeah okay okay i'm just making sure i'm not i haven't lost you no no it yeah. makes <laughs> it makes sense what you're saying appreciate that thank you well <laughs> it's just interesting because while 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 you're talking about that i was thinking about star wars and how like you know, we we initially all obviously side with the Jedi and, you know, the the Empire is evil and all, you know, good versus bad. And 
then if you if you break it down to a deeper level and you take into account every single film there's you know there's there's corruption there is you know <laughs> these absolutes on both sides and that you know yeah. both both sides they're they're trying to come to this sort of balance and you know by the end of it there there is a sense that there there's going to be more gray and it's not so black and white and you know i think that's yeah. very evident in even in this series and you know odyssey of fire and what you know they're what you're planning to do with it is you know there's there's going to be the this sense of you know yes obviously we we side with the heroes but you know you realize that there there's more of a middle ground that can be found than initially yeah. thought well we, we need we need to uh there's there's a uh how, how do i put this into word uh okay uh i want to I, I try to make it a point. I try to make it a point to see things from from your point of view. We may disagree. You mm-hmm. know, we may disagree. Whatever. I'm gonna hold on to my personal uh, to my personal dogmas, right? Mm-hmm. As 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 will you. But what I want to be able to do with you, or uh, you know, uh, the general disagreement that we m- may have. Um, uh, you know, I, I want to understand exactly where and with what are your thought patterns being molded by? Because it's it's really hard to remain angry with someone when you understand where they're coming. Right. From. You know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of uh, and you know, Luke's Invicta and and uh, Sidious. Um, you know, if if it would just, you know, if if it would just. If we could just sit down and see where exactly our, our, our points of views are, are coming from, we could come together as as a galactic coalition to uh, to better the the lives of the of the of the people that we are being overlords, or, you know, kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah that's... we don't take the time to do that though. It's like, nope, this is the way it is, and this is it, and it's like, well, well that's not, you know but that, and, and that's what causes all the strife and stuff and you know and and makes for a and makes for an interesting uh story yeah exactly right. and, and it, it having it in you know in the guise of a fantasy ep- epic makes it more palatable and you know we don't have to look at ourselves so closely and but you know the concept of togetherness and understanding other people's views and beliefs is is there and it's you know being ingrained into our brains whether we notice it or not um and i think that's what's really important about fantasy and you know art in general and entertainment is the the ability to be able to kind of disguise these bigger conversations in a form of entertainment Oh, that's yeah. Cool. That's that's the biggest thing about Odyssey of Fire is just to re- for people to reflect on things, but not feel like you know it's presented in a way that it's entertaining and but also informative. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say in this podcast um, is that about how Odyssey of Fire began, uh, the origins of it. Um, like, when did I start thinking about yeah. it? Ooh, I love origin stories. I love them. <laughs> oh, well, by the way, I, I do plan on um, having sequels to the book. And because and the whole series will be a, um, like, you know, the, the TV series, the first season is like the first book. Mm-hmm. And then the second, second season. And then, like, the third book is split into two different volumes and then the, there's like two volumes for the last book but um but yeah it's just it so started... it's so amazing to me that you have all of this like so mapped out and planned and like that's just so like inspiring to see that like wow it's <laughs> like you have this huge concept already like completely broken down into exactly how you want to present it like that's that not a lot of people have that sureness well i've yeah. been i've been planning it for a long long time see i've been writing it since i was a kid um i haven't 
but I've gotten a lot more done recently. Mm -hmm. Like when I was a kid, it was just um, the character. I just created the characters, like I or it's, and and just a very few of the characters. Like I think the only characters I really had that are still, you know, in Odyssey of Fire, and it wasn't even called Odyssey of Fire back then. I didn't really have a name for it. Right, right. Actually, I think I called it um, sorcery. Is what is just what it was called when I was a kid. It was, it was just called sorcery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was, and the O was like a, a crystal gem. Just like in Fan Corner Ten Man. Yeah, I love that. A... Oh. An homage but, to um... childhood. It's wonderful. Oh my goodness, this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love the origins. Yes. So. Uh, yeah. So the. It was called sorcery, and Sui was was a, always a character, but she she used to have black hair, and um, instead of the flame colored hair, and her name was spelled differently. It was spelled S O O O E. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, where, and, where, did, where did you come up with the or, or the, the inspiration behind the, the name of your of your main character, Sui? Originally, I just wanted, as a kid, I just, I, you know, I was, I grew up with Star Wars and the Lord of the Rings and every, every hero in there, you know, for the most part, like all the main heroes were like men. And I just was like, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have like a, a woman, you know, it's like yes. early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you know, the movement to make women more in prominent more prominent roles and stuff like this wasn't really around yet yeah a man yeah. ahead of his time you know hey yo for real for real a man ahead of his time love it <laughs> yeah I just was like let's just have a, a woman be you know a, a, the big hero of the story and there was like a side character who I, I think uh, was the original inspiration for George. He was a nameless uh, knight or warrior. He was just called the warrior. He didn't really have a name, but he wore like a big suit of armor. Although George isn't anything like him anymore. Was that a uh, was that kind of like a, a hats off to Saint George, uh, the the patron saint of because uh... names to me names are so important so important you know so when, yeah. when he played george and he was a warrior and he he you know he was the guy that supposedly killed the the last dragon in uh in in england back in the day you know? right. oh you know, darn so it's, it's, it's kind of like that's who we have to blame of... for no dragons <laughs> oh, so disappointed i know right i love oh, those things come too. on <laughs> Uh, it, I perceive it kind of like as a hats off to to Mister uh, to Saint George, Mister Saint George. Uh, I, mean, I, I I never knew about him until now. Uh, so just say, yep, uh, yep, that was it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I, you know, that's how people. If, if someone wants to perceive it that way, I mean, now you know, it, it could make that connection now. You know. Yeah, that that's the beauty. That's the beauty of any type of art that you make. It is always and will always be up to interpretation. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. so interesting. Like you could put up a blank canvas, and people would debate for hours about what it means, which is just it's <laughs> so fascinating as a human. It's as humans, yeah. that's what we do. Like we need to put meaning to things, even if you're like, no, I just hung up a blank canvas and I wanted to see what happened. People would be like, no, 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 no. There's some deeper meaning here it's it's the blank slate of life it's no it's a polar bear in a snowstorm uh, and i gotta send you i gotta send you these lyrics man um i've, I've got to send you these lyrics uh because what you're what you're talking about is whatever whatever pretty word you want to put on it you know be it god or be it the the uh that, the that, force that, is, that binds us yeah the, the, the yeah. force mm -hmm. this this right here i I had a dream. I had a dream on the 27th of May. I had a dream. Uh, and in this dream, in this dream, I was over the, the blue marble, right? And, and the darkness spoke 
that that was surrounding surrounding this blue marble. Thank you so much, baby. Um, there was this. The Earth was the blue marble, okay, and I'm floating on top of this thing, and uh, and the darkness surrounding was not a darkness that was like it wasn't like a, a like an evil darkness or anything mm -hmm. like this. It was it was a it, it was a just the void, the great unknown, the the and and the concept of the great unknown became you know this this uh, you know the, the the sky deity or whatever or you know. But even not even because the the sky deity we know the sky deity we know that he is a jealous god we know that he is you know th this or that so it, it goes even beyond that the great unknown spoke and then all the gods of uh, made up pantheons from D and D Obad High and like all these gods came together of all pantheons mm -hmm. and then uh, the concepts behind them like all the gods of nature in one voice spoke. And then the gods of knowledge in one voice spoke. And then the elementals in one voice spoke. And, and as they're speaking, they left. They, they, they left. And the ones that we were left with that remained, you know, cacophonous in a, in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a certain way uh, were not the best ones. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right. So it was like, all right, we, we, we are leaving this with you and we're out you're on your own like now you are on your own like you understand that you know you, you have this this understanding that we as people can come together and blah blah, blah and all this stuff now you need to spread this message because we're done and we're out and the ones that we're leaving behind are not the best ones but you yourselves within yourselves you know that it is uh what the truth what what the truth is so i was I had been drinking that night, <laughs> um, and and in my dream, I knew that I wasn't getting the full message because I had heavily drank that that night. So, um, so, but I wrote down what I what I kind of understood and just and 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 put it in song form. I've got to send you. I've got to send you this um, because yeah. it has. It, there's no coincidences. Mm -hmm. There are no coincidences. And oh, I'm a firm believer. Everything happens for a reason. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Had this dream, like what, whatever in my personal life, whatever happened is not. Co it's no coincidence that we are coming together in this at this exact moment in time. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll send them to you. Uh, um, through. Uh, uh, through, I'm just gonna send them to you somehow, some way. Some, yeah, you can yeah. send them on Facebook Messenger or something. I love you. Yes, <laughs> Facebook Messenger is the, is the way. Yes. <laughs> well, that's how. Yeah, yeah, totally, one hundred percent. Awesome. Yeah. So. That yeah, I'm definitely interested in reading those. The, the other thing I wanted to say was, um, yeah, the thing is, though, it's it's very, you can tell, like, my writing has changed a lot since then. Like, I've gotten a lot better. It's one of those things, like, I, I don't want to necessarily push it, you know, to say, like, buy this. I'll let people buy it if they want. I'll let people know that it exists, but I'm not going to like market it too much just because it's like, it's an older one and I want to market my, my new writing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, if people want to, if people are like, Hey, I want to see what you did before. Then, you know, they, then I'll let them know like, Hey, uh, buy this book. If you want, just know that I made this a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. And that's what voice of harmony is made for it's because on top of us making a film with with a story we're making actual we're ma we're basically making a band you know mm -hmm. like a real band that's going to be playing real music live and um i do and i do want to make an album yeah uh you said you were interested in helping out musically Melissa. yeah absolutely 
be awesome. And even if I yeah, can just offer some harmonies, no pun intended. Oh yeah. my goodness! <laughs> I, that is that's my medium because you know I I play in, in in these different bands, but what what my my main what I always think of is harmony. So when when you said the voice of harmony, I was like that is it called to me it just called to me so much if you look at my work with armor of god that's all it is is i just go in there and harmonize you know be it by voice or be it with with my guitars you know and it's just yeah there's harmony. there's harmony. nothing more satisfying than harmonizing and having it lock in there's an energy that there's an electricity electricity that happens uh, that just it's it's hard to like put into words but if you know it yes. you know it yes oh my goodness i love this so much <laughs> yes yes indeed yeah that's uh i'm excited i know you'll be i want to rhyme and like i i i've read i remember you showed me some of your lyrics before and just hearing you on your live streams um mm. i definitely want you to be a major uh person to write the lyrics for a lot of the songs for that okay and and of course, whenever it comes time for Odyssey of Fire, like original songs, like I'll definitely have you there for sure, because that's a that's a big um, area where you know, like I, we're already um, doing that that song that I told you about for the Fall of the Roses, my other short film that we're still editing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, we just, uh, yeah, that one, I'll talk to you about that later. Perfect. I, I, whatever, whatever I can do, you know, like whatever I can do there, what any, anything, anything that you need of me, I am, I am all, I'm all about, um, there's, there's a well, song, right. there's a song I wrote, it's called giving hands. And I, you know, like, why must you live out the songs that you wrote? Well, because that's what the, you know, you know um, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to not say drop the f bombs or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, it's 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 real. I wrote that song because it is it's it's real. I'm I I've got, mm. I've got a grave that I've got to get to at some point in time. 